In this episode, we're going to be working on the Lord of the Red Sands himself. And we're going to be working on some big things, some small things, and everything in between. Bet you didn't see that one coming. Now, with Angron's model, it already has a lot of detail, so it's going to be tough in deciding the direction of what we want to alter to improve this model. But I do have an idea, so let's get started. To start this build, we're going to build this model in multiple parts, and the first part will be the torso. We'll cut out the torso pieces and then glue them together. The next part is the tail. Cut the pieces, glue them, and then put them to the side. The same thing can be done for both the legs. Now that we have the main bulk of the model pre-built, we can start working on our first custom part, and this is going to be the head. The original head isn't bad, but it could be more... angry. So we'll design a new head, but with a twist. We're going to continue to use the lower part of the jaw, as it's already in the right pose and it will help with fixing the head onto the model. So with the lower jaw, we will remove the cables and cut more of a slanted angle so we can open the mouth more. With the jaw now cut, we can start to glue and fix the upper portion to the head using a little bit more of the melted sprue glue, which will help with closing any of the smaller gaps and holes to get a smoother connection and transition. Once we are happy, we will then glue the pieces all together. The next part is going to be a lot of cutting and filling in the neck and around the head. A large portion of the neck space needs to be removed so we can fit the new larger head. Once we have the main bulk of the neck removed, we'll be going back in with some green stuff to close the open void that we just created. We don't need to be overly neat here, as the head is going to be covering the majority of this area anyway. So just work on getting a nice connection and coverage of the area. The next part is then to dry fit the head into the green stuff so we have a more perfect connection point. So, using a little bit of water, I'll wet the head and then push this into the green stuff. Now that this is in place, we'll leave the green stuff to cure. Next, we're going to be working on the arms. And for this pose, I wanted Angron to be a bit more feral and not wielding any weapons. But to do this, we're going to need to cut the current hands off. So, taking a hobby saw, I'll cut cleanly along the wrist to get a nice clean cut. Now, we don't want to get rid of the weapons completely. I still have an idea for them. So, for the axe head, we'll put that to one side. As for the sword... No swords. Now, to replace the hands, we will fix our newly designed hands which will fit the pose perfectly. Once we are happy, we'll then glue the arms onto the torso. The next part is filling in the holes where the wings would be. And again, to do this, I'll use green stuff to backfill the voids. The reason we're deciding to do this is I don't like how the wings look. They just don't match along with the mass of what Angron is. So instead, we're going to be going a slightly different route. With the holes now filled, we can now glue the remaining of the model together. This includes the legs and the tail. Now, to deal with the large holes on the back, we're going to be adding some large spikes. Almost like a dinosaur. These will be pushed into the green stuff just to get a solid impression. Once the green stuff is dry, I'll then be gluing the spikes into place. The next part is to start working on adding the butcher's nails into the new head. The original cabling is still of use, but it's going to need a slight alteration. So, lining the pieces up, I'll then cut down into the head so the piece fits better with the head. As for the remaining cables, these are cut and then glued into place with some minor changes so they fit better. While we have now connected the butcher's nails, it could do with a few more. And to do this, we're going to be using guitar string. So, to do this part, I'll drill a hole into the head and then drill a hole into the neck. 
and then we'll be cutting the piece of wire and placing it into the each hole. At this point, we are mostly done with the model. Other than the armor, we can now start getting into the painting. Now that we have the model primed, the first part is going to be painting the skin, and the color we'll be putting down is mahogany from Pro Acryl. So give the entire model a good coating as this is going to be the base paint for the skin tone. The next color we will use is Tan Flesh from Pro Acryl. With this coating, we are looking to get a nice thin distribution of the paint over the model. This allows for the original mahogany to show through, giving some natural tones and shading. So keep putting down thin layers and build up to a solid color on the raised areas facing the light. For the next stage, we're going to be adding some ivory from Pro Acryl into the mix of Tan Flesh. This tone is now reserved for the highest spots to really make that skin pop. So once again, we're going to be adding this color in thin passes to slowly build up that opacity over the previous layer. And to finally finish the skin coloring off, we'll be using just pure ivory to highlight our previous highlight. For this model, the main spots are going to be the face, the shoulder, the chest, and then the hands. You really only need to be adding some small spots here and there. We still want to keep that contrast as we are now going to be adding more skin detail in the next step. So to start adding some more detail to the skin, we're going to be using oils. The first oil we are going to be using is Permanent Alizarian Crimson. This oil is going to be thinned down heavily with mineral spirits. With the paint thinned, we now want to slowly drop this into the cracks and creases of the skin. We want to avoid the wider, flatter areas. So, in this first round, we'll focus on the cracks and properly define the model and its shapes and its muscles. Now that we have the first shading down, we'll then be going back in with an even thinner mixture and then perform the same task. However, this time we want to bleed this mixture into the edges of the cracks that we've just done previously. Once this part is done, we are now going to be moving on to another color. At this point, this is how the model is starting to look like. But the next step is bringing that living skin tones in. And to start, we're going to be adding purple. This purple tone is selectively reserved for the deepest tones that we want to emphasize. For example, the underside of the shoulder, the chest, the armpits, the elbows and the knuckles. I just want to take this time to explain why I've decided to go with oils here over acrylics. Sure, I could be sitting there and using the acrylics and gently brushing them over, but the problem I always find with them is it's very difficult to get those smooth, subtle blends. But with oils, and you've, if, when you really thin them, you can really get some nice transitions. Just look at over here, look at the colors that we're placing down, look how they're blending together and the two oils are all mixing together. And when they dry, we're left with a very nice, smooth transition across the model. Makes it far easier than doing layer after layer after layer with the acrylic washes. And the best thing is, if we don't like it, we can remove it. Just a little bit of mineral spirits and we can reduce it or we can go straight back in with more paints. It's so much more forgiving when dealing with oils instead of acrylics, especially when we're trying to work with delicate skin. Now, to start introducing the variation in tones to the skin, we're going to be using Light Rust and Dark Rust from Abtalung 502. These colors are going to be used to bring that red and purple smoothly into the white of the skin. So, start applying this color in a very selective manner. This color is more added to the flatter, wider areas, and this will help with smoothing the blends together. As for the final part, we'll be now applying black oils, and this will be reserved for the deepest spots that we want to exaggerate the features of. In this instance, it's the face and the eyebrows. So now, here is how the skin is looking. Nicely detailed and looking really demonically painful. It's no surprise why he's so angry. Once we are happy, we will then varnish the entire model with matte varnish, and then we can move on to the armor. 
Now, before we can start working on painting the armor, I'm going to go through and protect the skin. To do this, I'll be using masking tape and then using liquid mask from Vallejo to cover all of the skin. This step can take some time, but we don't want to waste all of the time that we've just spent on the skin so far. With the model now masked off, I'll now rebase the armor with mahogany ready for the metallics. The next step is getting that brass color down. And to do this, we'll be using AK Interactive's True Metals. And the first color we'll be using is copper. So take a medium sized brush, gently buff the paint into the bristles, and then start working on removing the metallics off of the brush. Once the brush is loaded, we'll now be gently buffing this onto the model. With the copper, we are looking to get the underside of the metals as it bends with the light. We also want to barely deposit any of the metallics to the underside and the shadows. We'll want to keep the copper away from the highest spots as this is going to be placed with brass in a moment. Now, the great thing with these paints is we don't need to rush. We do have some time to work with these paints. So take your time and apply this color to all the places where you'd want to place it. We now want to apply the brass to the highest areas and catching the highest spots and blending the brass into the previous layer of copper. The great thing with these paints is they mix very well with each other, so you will get some nice, easy transitions. The final step is adding silver, and this is reserved for the sharpest spots on the armor, so selectively add this to really make the armor stand out. Now, to really bring the contrast out of this model, we're going to be applying some oils to the recesses. The reasons why we're adding oils is they react very well with these AK Interactive True Metal range. The spirits reactivates the paints and then it blends with the metallic flakes with the oil pigments. The best part is, where the spirits are mostly concentrated, this will actually strip most of the metallic pigments away, revealing that under base coat that we've just put down and then it will deposit the pigments to the edges of where the spirits evaporate. Because we base the armor in mahogany, this color then pushes through, giving us a more realistic shift in color from the shade. So go through the model and apply these oils to all the shadows. Now to start working on the weathering, I'll be using some copper oxide and turquoise lights from Abtalung 502. With these both thinned heavily, this is now washed into the World Eater's icons. Because the mixture is very thin, we'll be layering up this color, slowly building the opacity in the recesses. I'll then use the copper oxide as a broader muted tone, and then I'll be applying the richer turquoise lights to add some strong tones into the weathering. This process is repeated to all the icons on the Primark. Don't go over the top, it's already looking good. With the armor now painted, the next step is removing all of the masking. For the tape, it's nice and easy. A little pull and it comes off. As for the liquid mask, well, you might need some elbow grease. So take some time and carefully remove the liquid mask from the model. To help speed up the process, I'll take some tweezers and a small bit of dried liquid mask and stick this to the mask of the model. This will help with speeding up the process. process. Do you ever find yourself doing menial, repetitive tasks? Find yourself bored to the point where your heart just stops? Hi, I'm Bill from the Boredom Awareness Association and we're here to warn you about the dangers of boredom. For only £17.99 a month, we can protect your family for when the inevitable comes for when the boredom gets you. What do you mean? He's alive? Quick, quick, quick. Oh, that was a close call. Anyway, with the armor now done, it's time to start working on some of the other features of the model. To deal with the remaining metals, I'll base these in warm grey from Pro Acryl. Next, I'll use gun metal from AK Interactive's True Metal, and I'll start to buff these grey areas. The next part is tackling the small red pieces of cloth, and to start, I'll base these in the mixture of mahogany and burnt red in a one-to-one -one mix. Next, I'll take just burnt red and thin this mixture down. 
I'll then streak this color down the cloth and try to simulate texture while blending the color from the previous mix. This will take multiple coats and each layer I'll reduce the surface area from the previous layer. Finally, I'll use Pyrol Red and perform the same step as before. This time, this color is saved for the highest areas for the brightest color. So slowly layer this down and slowly reduce the surface area covered. As for the horns, they'll be based in mahogany and then taking golden brown to create a three to one mixture. Three parts mahogany, one part golden brown. This mixture is also thinned to an almost glazed consistency and this is applied to the horns, slowly covering less area with each layer. Once we have done this step, we will continue to keep adding golden brown to the mixture until we are left with just pure golden brown for the tip. This process is repeated for all of the horns on the model. The next part is dealing with the leather straps on the armor. And to start, I'll base them in warm gray from Pro Acryl. Next, I'll use the oils to get a right amount of blending quickly. The first color I'll put down is Ghost Gray from Aptalung 502, and I'll use a dry brush to apply this coloring. Next, I'll start adding light flesh tones into the Ghost Gray to get a lighter tone. This is then applied to the leather straps with the dry brush as well. And then finally, we'll be applying just light flesh tones to the tip. Now, the reasons why I prefer to do this with oils is you don't get left with any of the chalky effects as you would from acrylics. Sure, you can wet the brush, but then you are stuck by the working time in getting the right blends. With oils, it's just a quicker way to get a smoother transition. With the straps now painted, we only have two steps left, building the base and then putting it all together. So let's start building Angron and then let's get working on the base. The original base that comes from Angron is quite small. And because we have altered the overall profile of this model, it's going to need some compensation. So to do this, we're going to need a much bigger base. Much better. So first off, we're going to increase the profile of Angron and we will be creating a tall cliff edge. And to do this, I'll be using some cork coasters and then breaking them into shape. Stack these together and then glue them together. Once the glue has set, I'll now take a knife and start carving the edges to be more rigid and broken. Next, I'll fix down the original base piece from Angron's kit and glue this to the top of the cork edge. The next part is now using Smart Mud and applying this all over the cork. This will be used to blend in the cork and the plastic base piece. I'll want to remove any of the flat areas and give in there some more structure so we have some more texture for the painting. Next up, I'll apply Mod Podge all over the Smart Mud and then apply some ground dirt all over the glue. More glue is then used to increase the strength of the dirt and then isopropyl alcohol is used to break the surface tension so the glue can get into the dirt. This process is repeated over the entire base. Once the base is covered, we'll let this dry and then prime the base. With the base primed, the first color we're putting down is warm gray over the cliff and rocks. Next, I'll dry brush Field Blue from Vallejo all over the rocks. The next step is then applying Ivory into the Field Blue to create a brighter blue. This is then applied over the rocks, but now we are starting to focus onto the tips and more flatter spots of the base. We will keep repeating this process until we are only applying pure Ivory to the tips of the base. The next step, I'll apply Jade from Pro Acryl and paint the remaining space of the base. This is going to be for the ocean as we're about to start a big resin pour. For the next step, I'll cut some plastic card to create a sealed barrier for the resin to sit inside. With the barrier now glued, I'll test the container for any leaks and also work out the volume of the resin we're going to need to mix. Perfect, no leaks. With the resin now poured, it's time to start applying the colorings to get the ocean color. 
Here I'll add two drops of Jade and one drop of Druki Violet and now it's time to slowly stir this mixture together. With the resin now mixed, it's time to start pouring. So, let's start this pour. Now we need to give the resin 24 hours to cure before we can start the next stage. And here is how the resin is looking. Now it's time to start removing the container. So, using a sharp knife, I'll slowly pry and remove the plastic from the resin. Now this resin does look good as it is, but we are going to be carving some ripples and waves for the ocean. To do this, I'll be using the rotary tool, but because this is going to get messy, we'll do some movie magic to get this step done. So three, two, one, there we go. Now we have a lot of texture and waves and ripples all over the base. Next, we'll just create some crashing waves, and to do this, I'll repurpose parts of a clear plastic bottle and use a heat source to warp and melt the plastic into shape. For the next part, I wanted to create the ocean foam, and to do this, I'll use water texture paint and shred some cotton wool. This is then applied to the heaviest parts where the foam would be. Next, I'll stipple white ink all over the tips of the waves and then use an airbrush to apply the white ink in a feathered approach. And finally, bold white from Pro Acryl is then stippled onto the tips of the waves. And now with the base done, we are left with this. Looking for an excuse to get this suit out. And it goes with the hat too. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, well, that's the show done. There we go. It's the first Primark on the channel. Still not Mortarian though, is it? I'll get round to him one day. We'll see. But um, yeah, any of the STL files which we're using this are up on our Patreon page. So go check that out. And um, yeah, we'll see what the future brings. We're, we're trying to decide on how we want to work on doing an entire army as a video, but we're still trying to work out how to deal with the delivery of that. Do we do it by unit? Do we do it for the whole thing? Do we just do pieces here and there? We're not sure. But uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Things that you liked, didn't like, and what you would like to see as well. We're very important what we want to see on the channel. But um, from myself and uh, old Bill, Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the show. Until next time.